Brett Berkey, and this is Rick Allen, and uh, we're coming today to do some new ones, new podcasts that... Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, you know, I want a vacation, I want a vacation, we have the holidays with Thanksgiving, so... I went to the woods, Brett, <laughs> Brett went to the Bahamas. I went to the Bahamas, so, so. A, lot, a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, today I got some actually some interesting questions I'm going to pull up for us uh, that came from a uh, fellow user on Paper Sack, and I got to sit down and chat with them. And ask, you know, what, what are your questions and kind of see how they go through it. And I thought it was such, such good questions that I decided, you know, we need to actually share this with everyone because other people are going to want to know these things. So, sure. Let me go to the. So, we're going to start with um, what is an appropriate bid? So, the question that came from this uh, buyer was, you know, I'm, I'm looking at these assets uh, and I want to make a bid, but I don't want to be insulting and I also don't want to overbid or. He said, what am I even supposed to do with these making offer ones where there's no there's no negotiated price right there? It's like, you got to come up with your own offer. So he's like, what's the process of actually making an appropriate offer that's not insulting? Uh, I don't go too high. And, you know, he wants that Goldilocks sweet spot. That would be perfect. So I guess the easiest way to talk about this is, first of all, is you have to understand what's your goal. Okay. Like, do you have a target? If you have a fund, ultimately you have a target that you need to hit for your fund to pay back your investors. If you're investing with your self-directed retirement account, you have to establish like, look, what's my what's my targeted return? If you don't know that, then you don't you have you don't have a baseline of what to work off of, and it makes it much easier to start bidding if you can say, look, this is my here's my minimum threshold, and from there I can let that fluctuate up or maybe down depending on the risk of the investment. Interesting. And so you work it backwards. Like this is what I, this is my yield I want to make. This is what I'm looking to make. I'm looking to make this amount. Um, you know, and you have that, maybe it's 12, maybe it's 14, whatever that number is, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 16. I don't know. Whatever that number is. Well, let's just say it's 12. We'll work off of a 12% yield. Okay. You say, look, I'm, I'm looking to invest with myself direct retirement account. I'm looking to hit a 12. I'd be very happy with a 12 if I can get that annually passively on a performing loan. All right. Right. So then I'd say, okay, let's look at what the asset, you know, at that point you have to look at what's the interest rate, you have to look at what's the balance, and then you have to look at the asset um, risks that it may possess, like right. uh, the payment history. Mm -hmm. Do they have a really consistent payment history? Do they have, do they have five years of payments where they're earlier on time every time? Well, that's a really um, non-risky investment, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, is there something where the house is worth, you know, two hundred thousand, and, and the val or the the balance on the loan is one hundred twenty five thousand. Again, not a risky investment. Why? Because if you had to take it back, you know, it's worth two hundred thousand. There's two hundred thousand dollars there. Mm -hmm. Not saying that you're going to be able to act, tap into that and get the full two hundred because it may sell at auction. But at least you know there's motivation for the buyer to keep paying. Yes. Yes. And if you and if they stop paying, then you can you know you can work ways in there. We're like, look, I'll throw you you know five or ten grand, sign the house over, stuff like that. So it's a less risky investment. If it's a less risky investment, and you just look at it and you say, look, this thing is a is a home run deal, and it, it's turning a twelve percent yield based on whatever the offer price is. You probably don't want to rock the off part. I wouldn't, but that because you're you're able to get in there and buy something that's going to meet your threshold. Um, and maybe you see something that's like that that's at an eight or a nine percent yield. Right. You know, at that point you can go ahead and say, are you happy with an eight or nine? Because you know you can put out in this instance a larger chunk of money. You know, it's not a twenty thousand dollar loan, maybe a hundred thousand you're putting out, but I know that I'm gonna be able to have something that's fairly passive. It's it's not very um, a not very risky investment. Mm -hmm. Or it's a reduced risk investment. So you're going to go ahead and say, okay, I'm, am I happy with that number? If you're not happy with an 8 and you're like, look, I really need to hit a 12, but I do a 10 because this one's such a solid asset, then just go ahead and put that in there. And whenever I'm submitting an offer, it always helps if you submit the offer and then you, you provide with some, the backstory, right? That's what it's Because ultimately you're selling the right. reason why you're giving this offer. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, do you want to tell the seller... Hey, look, this is my offer. This is where I'm at. This, I'm trying to reach this yield. This is exactly. And you say, look, normally I'm a 12, but because this one, they've obviously made some consistent payments or it's in a good area or there's a, there's a strong equity position, something along those lines, I'm immediately, I'm putting that all in there. Say, look, uh, you're at an eight. I'm at a 12. Let's meet in the middle at a 10. I, I, I can do this at a 10. It doesn't really meet what I'm looking for, but all things considered, uh, I would do it because all things will balance out. And so... 
Now, coming up with that price, so let's just say it's a, a, a you need a calculator for that, or you, you, you have to. Yeah, you need a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not ready, man. Most people, most people. I mean, you can do some down and dirty math quickly and get it. But you, you know, whether you have a spreadsheet, uh, you know, a financial calculator, you plug the numbers in there, mm -hmm. and you can back into your price pretty easily. Interesting. Well, that's another episode. But that, what's the one calculator that's really popular? The 10BII or something like that. Mm -hmm. They have an app for it too. They have an app that I do it on my phone, and it's you plug in all the information, and then you plug in, you know, you might plug in the the number of payments remaining, the principal and interest payment, the purchase price, and the the monthly payment, and that'll or not the month, yeah, the monthly payment. I'll tell you like what the yield is. So if you want to figure out um, like what's what's on trying to hit a target, right? Then you like a target a target purchase price and it's generating an uh you know an eight percent yield you just type in ten percent yield and then instead of putting in the purchase price number you hit that and it'll generate the purchase price for you so, okay here's what you need to do much easier if we show you uh, maybe in another episode we can show you how to run those calculations and we can do them with you know an excel spreadsheet or we can do them with the calculator probably do it both ways to show you but that's how you do it now conversely if you're looking to hit a 12, but you've got something that's in, it's a lower price band asset. Mm -hmm. There's not as much equity there. The borrower's payment history is a little spotty. Then you can say, well, I, I got a target. I got a target of 16. The, the more riskier the investment, the higher the return usually is. So super risky is going to be higher return. Not super risky is, you know, you expect a lower return. Right. And then does the terms work into that too? Like how long? Sure. Yeah, you will. everything works into it. It's, it's such a dynamic process to bid on an asset that you have to say, look, you have to take in as many data points as possible. Right. Because ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, look, at the end of the day, you want to say, is the risk worth the reward? Right? Mm -hmm. And it's all, and that's a personal question. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's risk tolerance is different. It varies from person to person. Yeah, the, the next we were looking at were some houses, but mostly it was, it was land notes. And the, the reason why he was looking at those is because of shorter terms. There are shorter terms, usually higher interest rates. Higher interest rates, uh, shorter terms, lower balance. They're not as crazy. They're not like 100,000. They're like 15, you know, 20. Mm -hmm. But uh, the only other thing was, you know, a lot of times the UPB to the origination price was not too far off. You know, it's like. Well, because a lot of the people are they're buying land, originating, and they're putting them back in there. They're, they're putting them for sale immediately. Right. So they can rec recoup their cash and go do it again. Meaning I, then I didn't have a down payment a lot of times. So that's a scary. lot of times they, yeah. I mean, listen, um, that's what I would call a more risky investment. Yeah. Is when there's little to no down payment and no seasoning, it's a riskier investment. Yeah. So I'm going to want a higher yield on that. Yeah. And I'm going to want to look at some other stuff. I'm going to be like, look, you know, did you, are you just, are you finding anybody to fog a mirror and originate? You know, yeah. originate a loan so you can turn around and try to resell it and get your money. Mm -hmm. I, I'm talking with some uh, a group of gentlemen out of uh, Texas that are originating loans. Uh, they're originating, they're 11.9% interest rates. Mm -hmm. Balance on them is somewhere between 75 to 185,000. Wow. But they're taking down 20, 25 grand. Okay. Okay, so for me, I'm like, oof, 11.9, it's a land deal. 11.9. Mm -hmm. But they've got twenty to twenty-five grand down on the, the, the higher tiered ones. The lower ones are, you know, eight to sixteen thousand down. Well those are good. Those are good. The borrowers paying the servicing fees. That's yes. nice. Yeah, a lot. There's a lot of great stuff there. And Texas is always nice to get the it's easier to get the property back. So those are those are good deals. You just have to but like the risk. Like those guys are wanting, you know, ninety two percent of the balance. If not, if they're, if they're taking in twenty grand and it's newly originated and they're getting ninety two percent of the balance at eleven point nine percent, you're already built in. You know, you're almost at a twelve there. Mm -hmm. You figure in your discount, you're north of a twelve. It works. Mm -hmm. So those are interesting. But re you reselling those would be kind of tough because you're already at ninety two, right? To buy that and resell it, yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be difficult. Ninety two, ninety two. Oh. But if you're a portfolio guy and you just want to stuff it in your portfolio, yeah. it's great. You know? That's cool. Well, I think that really kind of dug, dug into the question, answered some of the things that I was thinking about that, you know, I didn't. I didn't Back know. into your numbers, and if it's not what they're looking for, go ahead and just tell them why you're bidding that. Nobody's going to be insulted if you're telling that. They'll get insulted if you just lowball them and you don't give them a reason why. Yeah, I've seen that. 
And, you know, and sometimes a low ball is warranted if it's a 3% interest rate or a 4% interest rate. Mm -hmm. You say, look, I got a target here. Yes, I know you would like to get 85, 90% of the balance, but I need to get this threshold and you have a 3% interest rate. It's, my hands are tied. I can't, I can't do it and say, look, it's not a, it's not an issue of I'm just trying to low ball you and get a great deal. Here's the numbers I got to hit. And it's just a math problem at that point. Right? Yeah. Same thing goes if there's no, if it says just make an offer. Yeah, make an offer much with the ones that... Those are tough, but you, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because if you back into the numbers, the way we just talked about, so you're looking at that point, you don't have a purchase price to go off of. You're just saying, what's my target yield? Mm -hmm. What's the, um, what are the, the factors? What's all the data points? Mm -hmm. And where is that leading me? Is it risky? Is it non-risky? That makes sense. And I will say for those that are listening that are looking at assets on the platform, uh, the make me an offer ones get less bids. So, you know, Less competition. Less competition. So they, you know, when you, because it takes uh, the skills to actually come up with an offer. So they, I, I, I've seen it in the past where sometimes when the negotiated ones that are really good, they might have like 10 or 15 offers. And then the guys that did a, make me an offer, they have like four. You know, like, and it's like, you know, and some will be like way off. And I think it's like, you know, if it gets close into the range of where it works for them. You can throw slits, like, I don't hate putting out the offer. The old school way to do it in the way that like debt's been traded forever is just like, look, you put it out there, here's a portfolio, give me your bid. Mm. With what I'm finding in this secondary or tertiary market that's sort of evolving and paper stack has helped to develop is a lot of the people are making the crossover from real estate investing mm. into, notes. into notes. And they're used to, hey, that's the purchase price, I'm gonna make an offer based off of the purchase price. It's really scary when you don't know what, you know, you, you know, what are, what am I supposed to do here? Am I going to way overbid on this? Or am I going to way underbid on this? Mm -hmm. And if you back into it and you kind of get yourself into the area of the price, you'll know. Yeah. You'll know, okay, this is where I kind of need to be. I can shoot for the stars a little bit and offer them, you know, at an 18 when I really want a 12 and open up lines of communication. But, uh, you know, if you're going to make an offer, always just open up lines of communication, talk. Yeah. It's so much easier to communicate. Make the phone call through the platform. Mm -hmm. Get them on the phone. Yeah. Feel them out. Yeah, that makes total sense. It makes total sense. They're selling it for a reason. They're motivated to sell it. So yeah. somewhere in there, there's there's a high probability that there's a, a number that will meet. Because if you've got all if you've got all of these loans that you're trying to sell, you kind of know where they're gonna sell for. You have an idea. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a lot of them you're selling, then you've been doing this for a while. So you, you know what's going on. So that's what I would say. You know, start with your own, know your own baseline, and then you can work from there. It becomes much easier to bid if you just know your own baseline and what you're happy to. One more thing I will say is if you do sell, if you do buy something from somebody, um, I'm a firm believer, and you don't count another man's dollars, or another person's dollars. Um, if I'm happy and I got a 14, and I find out they just made, you know, a pile of money on, on me for selling something, whatever. I'm happy. I should be happy, right? You know, if somebody, if you find out somebody went out and marketed a deal, marketed for deals, got a deal, they got a really good price, and they turn around and they sell it to you, and you're happy with the price, and you come to find out later that they made, you know, a 70% return for, you know, 60 days worth of work or 30 days worth of work, whatever, you're happy with the price you got, right? Yeah, yeah kudos to them. That's actually, uh, Jimmy Bateman did an episode on that where he bought a note for 100000 or $100. And he sold it on our platform for eighteen thousand. It happens all the time, but you don't know what he did in the middle there. He said he had to hold it for two years. He held it for two years. He, had he probably had to do work, restructure it. Yeah. It was a risky investment. Anytime you're buying a hundred dollar, <laughs> it's, it's a risky investment. Right. It will work out like that. I can show you times when we've paid for some that we killed it on, mm -hmm. and then other times that we were it was we it came back. It all works out in the end. That's cool. So that's cool. Hope that helps. Cool. Um, yeah, we will do the calculator ones. I'm gonna be sure to write that, write those down. Because any news, news. I mean, closings.com should be coming out soon. Very, very soon. We're wrapping up our beta stuff right now, so it's it's at the, the doorstep, and it is fantastic. We do also have, uh, have um, recordings at service now, so that's something that we have built out where you can just go to the page and check out and get a recording. And we got all the county licenses. Most of them. Some states are still kind of weird, so I don't think we're gonna. You know, Pennsylvania might be off the list, but other ones, you know, out there, we will cover. And it's, a, it's just as easy as checking out on any checkout page. So I'll put a link to that in the bottom. 
Uh, we do have now uh, some document generation tools we're coming up with that are really cool. So if you needed a cache for keys, doc, you just put in your information, we'll generate the document, and that's it. Now, that currently, is right now, that's just free, because we're just kind of testing it out. Cash for keys, servicing transfer, uh, deed in lieu. Hello letter, goodbye hello letter. Hello letter, goodbye letter. And so, you know, we're just going to have all these these templates. There's a lot of documents over there. It'll be cool once it's all done. So, but that's it, and we'll uh, see you on the next episode.